As World War II raged across the globe, the eastern side of the world was tangled in a fierce jungle war, and the Japanese Imperial Army were struggling to hold their positions throughout Burma, now present-day Myanmar. Among the British Indian Army who were fighting the Japanese, a soldier called Lakaman Garung was fighting with his battalion as a part of the 8th Gurkha Rifles. Now a legend due to his warrior-like behavior, Garung went down in history for his actions during the Battle of Imphal. Let's take a look at this fearless Gurkha and how he used only his left arm to mark his page in the history books. Lakaman Gurung was born on December 30, 1917, in the village of Dekani in West Nepal. He came from a humble background, and like many young men from his region, he sought opportunities for employment and adventure. In 1940, when World War II was in full swing, Gurung joined the British Indian Army, enlisting in the 4th Battalion and the 8th Gurkha Rifles. By 1944, World War II was raging across the globe, and Gurung found himself deployed to the battlefront in Burma as a part of the Allied forces fighting against the Japanese Imperial Army. The Battle of Imphal, which took place from March to July 1944, was one of the critical engagements in the Burma campaign. Gurung was sent to the front line where the Gurkhas stood on one side and the Japanese on the other. On May 12, 1944, during the height of the Battle of Imphal, Garung's unit was holding a defensive position near the village of Taungda. This region, much like the surrounding area, was covered in thick tropical jungle, interspersed with rugged hills and valleys. The dense vegetation provided cover for both the Allied and the Japanese forces, turning the battlefield into a maze of concealed positions, narrow trails, and hidden dangers. Sentry positions were set up around the outskirts of Gurung's camp to monitor such areas for enemy activity and surprise attacks. Gurung and two other men were maintaining one of these posts, a trench along an access road that led directly to the camp. Going about their usual business when conducting these monitoring nights, the men would be chatting to each other quietly in order to stay awake while staring into the void of the Burmese jungle. However, at 1.20 a.m., their conversation was broken. In the darkness of night, 200 Japanese soldiers emerged from the jungle tree line and launched a fierce assault, aiming to break through the camp and the remaining Allied lines. Their first level of resistance was a trench along the road, the trench that our friend Gurung was manning with his two teammates. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Gurung knew that if his team allowed the Japanese through this first line of defense, the sleeping camp would be obliterated by the Imperial Army and all his friends and countrymen would be lost. As the Japanese attackers closed in, Gurung's position came under intense bombardment and small arms fire. Grenades were shaking the ground next to Gurung, bullets flying past his ears and connecting with the trees behind him. But he refused to yield knowing that if he could hold off the Japanese and alert his camp, he would have support to overcome the assault. Amidst the chaos of the battle, a grenade landed in the trench where Gurung and his comrades were positioned. Time appeared to stop as Gurung looked at the explosive laying between him and his teammates. With split-second reflexes, he grabbed the grenade. The live explosive left Gurung's hand almost as quickly as he had picked it up and detonated in the air above his enemies. Gurung felt a rush go through his body like he had never before. He had just handled a live enemy grenade and returned it in the fractions of a second before it exploded. Now without fear, he was adamant that he and his comrades could defeat the 200 Japanese soldiers. The grenades continued to rain down on their position and Gurung continued to dodge them, ignore them, or throw them back at their cinders. However, one grenade too many was all it took. In one of his attempts to return to cinder, before he could release one of the explosives, it detonated in his hand. His right hand was scattered in as many pieces as there was shrapnel, and the metal caused severe wounds to his face, neck, and legs, inducing blindness in his right eye. Stunned and laying in the trench, Gurung looked around to see his two comrades fighting the Japanese, but they weren't there. 
Laying next to him, also gravely wounded, his only other teammates were out of action. Garung remembered his friends sleeping in the camp. He ignored the unbelievable pain, and with his left arm still attached, he picked up his rifle and grenades and rejoined the fight alone. In a symbol of resolute defense, Garung stuck his Kukri knife in the ground at arm's reach from his trench, marking a physical line that he shouted to his enemies they were never going to cross. Placing his Lee Enfield rifle on the ground next to his knife, he pulled back the bolt action with his left hand and continued to fire at the approaching Imperial Army. Reloading with the ammunition that his wounded comrades had donated while tending their wounds, Garung continued to hold their defensive position, killing any Japanese soldier that charged at his trench. After four grueling hours of solo fighting, his comrades from the camp arrived to offer support to the Gurkha who had lost a lot of blood due to his untreated wounds. Despite being gravely wounded, Garung was much better off than the 31 Japanese soldiers that lay dead next to his position in the trench. Fortifying the numbers of men supporting the trench, the Burmese Gurkha fought for two nights and three days as the Japanese continued to send waves of men to attack the camp. Garung's heroic actions bought precious time for reinforcements to arrive, and ultimately the Allied forces were able to repel the enemy attack. For his extraordinary bravery and selfless devotion to duty, Lakamon Garung was awarded the Victoria Cross by King George VI in 1945. He became the second Gurkha soldier to receive this highest military honor during World War II. After the war, Garung returned to his village in Nepal, where he lived a quiet life as a farmer. He remained humble about his heroic deeds, stating that he only did what any other Gurkha soldier would have done in the same situation. As he thought he was going to die anyway, he would rather fight until the very end. Lakamon Garung passed away on December 2, 2010 at the age of 92. His legacy lives on as a shining example of the unbreaking courage and spirit of the Gurkha soldiers, whose bravery has earned them a reputation as some of the finest warriors in the world. If you're battling some tough situations out there, remember Garung and keep on fighting. You might just beat the odds. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, Sergeant Rooster, over and out.